So welcome to my allotment. Today I'm going to be giving you a tour of my allotment and show you what's happening on my allotment. It's the beginning of April, so it's a really, really exciting time. It only seems like a couple of weeks ago where there was like virtually nothing happening on the allotment. And although we have to be really mindful of what we plant out at the moment, because one minute it can be glorious sunshine, like last week, it was absolutely beautifully hot weather, and I didn't need a coat or anything, this week, on the other hand, we had snow this morning, so all my tender plants are all safely locked up in my conservatory at home. It's even too cold for them to be out in the greenhouse at the moment. Now, I can't even put them out during the day to get an air in because it would, the, the cold weather would just kill them off straight away. So I'm gonna take you around the allotment and show you all the new growth and all the exciting things that are happening this month already, and it's only the beginning of April. So if you've not already subscribed to my channel, if you could please do so, because you'll get lots of helpful hints and tips all throughout the year from my home garden, my allotment, and also my home kitchen. So as we move over to the rhubarb, a perfect example of things that have just burst into life. You know, only a few weeks ago, there were tiny little stubs of rhubarb here, not enough to pick or do anything with. Whereas now, absolutely fabulous. And actually my son took some to school uh, last week to, to do in a recipe for um, crumble, which he was doing for one of his um, one of his lessons. So loads of rhubarb there, so I can quite happily start picking that. As we move around, I can't believe how much growth is on the pear tree. Look, little blossoms already forming now. How fantastic is that? Absolutely, little bits of colour you can see there, the little pink blossoms just poking through, which is absolutely amazing. So hopefully the frost doesn't put pay to that, but hey ho, it is what it is. And as we move down, the raspberries again are filling out now with lots and lots of greenery there. So that's looking absolutely marvellous. And I don't know if you remember, you know, a few weeks ago, it just looked like brown canes everywhere and hardly anything. Tiny, tiny little buds, but hardly anything. And again, the same there with the cherry tree. Look at all the lovely little buds there. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and the same with the blackberries as well, look. Absolutely bursting into life. You know, it really is full steam ahead now. So, as we move down with the gooseberries, and I've got to confess, I think nearly every year, I think my gooseberry plants are dead, because during the winter, they just look completely bare, completely wooden, completely nothing. But again, look, absolutely burst into life. There we go, look, lots of lovely, lovely greenery there, and little tiny buds forming as well. Absolutely fantastic. As we move down, the garlic that I put in in October is really starting to swell out. As you can see, look, the stems are really chunking out now, so that's a really good sign that they're starting to do what they need to do. They won't be ready for quite some time now. We're looking at about June. A lot of people I see have been digging them up, thinking they'd be ready now. They won't be. More like June time, so the stems need to die off, and I'll show you when that happens to mine, so you know what to look out for. But very, very promising signs, because those stems are thickening out nicely. The kale underneath my cover is definitely um, bolting now. So I do, I do need to get this out this month. It's a job I should have done already, to be fair, but you can't get everything done. Um, it generally is the urgent jobs that get done this month, you know, to get things ready. So I will be clearing that soon. As we move down, I've put my onion sets in and they're looking really good. Careful not to tread on them. It's quite easy to tread on them. But as you can see, look, already starting to sprout here. So really, really promising. Like I said before, look around to make sure birds haven't pulled any out and poked them back in if that's happened. But I think mine have all started to root in now and it's rained on them quite a few times. So it's less likely for the birds to, to have a go, shall we say. But they still might take their chances. These are my overwintering onions. So they have been attacked by the birds a little bit and the slugs, but I'm sure they'll be fine. They often do look, look a little bit shabby this time of year. But again, these won't be ready again until about June time. So there's still loads of time for them to be doing what they need to do. So this bit's still covered. So I've not, not put anything in this bit yet. And this is where my potatoes are. So your potatoes, they're not shooting through. So the fact that we've got a bit of frost really doesn't matter. And even if you do get a bit of frost, it just kind of like slows them down a little bit. And so they're all safely tucked up deep underneath the soil. So the fact that we've had a little bit of snow this morning really doesn't matter. So my cake gooseberries, I have had a little bit of a sneak. They're not sprouting yet. And um, I'll just have a quick look through the mesh. I can't see anything yet, but I'm gonna give leave them there and just see what happens. Fingers crossed, it'd be nice to get some early cake gooseberries as well. So as we move over, 
if you've not already watched the video i planted my dahlias recently and they're all in the ground again they'll, they'll all be fine you know we had a little bit of frost but not enough to damage the dahlias they'll they'll be absolutely fine as we move up i've got my um cabbages under here so they're doing really nicely i haven't harvested any yet but i probably will be this month they really get into the size where we can harvest them if we take a look um, under here I think one for Easter maybe. Yeah, if you, as you can see, look, it's a decent bit of, um, you know, filled out quite nicely. So I will be starting to harvest those soon. I know I keep saying that, but I really will do it at some point. <laughs> as we move up, I've still got the last of my parsnips, which I will dig up at some point this month. They won't be the, they are the straggly ends probably. They won't be the best parsnips in the world, but they'll still be perfectly edible and I'll really enjoy eating those. I'm keeping this covered until I start planting in here. I think I said before, you know, if you can keep keep stuff covered when you're not planting on it, because otherwise the weeds will grow quicker than you would you would want them to. Um, so definitely worth keeping ground covered when you've not got anything in it. You really will reap the benefits of it when you do start and um, planting stuff out. It means you've got less to do basically. So as we move up, the black are looking absolutely fabulous. So hopefully I will get more of them this year than the birds did last year. So they're looking really good. So lots of lovely, lovely buds on there. So it's really, really quite an exciting time. So I can't wait to get some black black hands. So, and as we move up, we've got the artichokes. So we've got the top of the lot again. And the artichokes are coming along beautifully again. Something like this isn't affected by the frost and neither are any of your fruit cans. I know a lot of people are worried about, you know, what will be affected by the frost. But all the things that I've got out at the moment, the frost is absolutely fine. Things like your fruit canes, your fruit trees, things like these artichokes, the rhubarb, they're all absolutely fine. It's things like your delicate plants, like your brassicas, the tomatoes, the aubergines, um, all that sort of thing. All the stuff you've started off from seed, basically, that needs to be kept tucked up and warm. Now, I do hope that this has inspired you, and actually the sun's coming out just towards the end, so maybe it will be a slightly warmer day. Um, if you've got any comments or questions, and tell me what you're doing as well on your allotments, I'll be really interested to hear.